What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and following UFC 308 which I've already done my postcard recap for so go check that out if you haven't already. There are a lot of fighters that need to be matched up for their next fights. There's a lot of sort of on to the next one, what's next for these guys, um, discussions that need to be had and there's a lot of options for a lot of these key fighters. So I'm going to be talking about every key fighter on the card, every single winner and then a few of the key losers as well and discussing what I want to see next for them. You guys let me know in the comments if you agree with my selections. Who do you want to see next for each of these fighters? But we're going to start off with the main event, go all the way down to the prelims. But yeah, starting off with Ilya Toporio. Ilya Toporio, it's I think what is going to happen. Now, I know they brought Volk into the cage and I know Dana White said Volk's next. But Volk wants to fight in February in Australia. He's been very clear about that. And Ilya has been pretty clear that he doesn't want to fight in Australia. He's like, what the fuck would I fight in Australia? Why would I go to Volk's hometown to rematch him when I knocked him out the first time? Like, if we're going to do a rematch, it's happening in Spain. So I think what's going to end up happening is Ilya. And I'm not going to complain because I think Ilya is having good performances. It's not like he's fucking Leon Edwards maxing and then taking eight months off. If you're just KOing people and you need, we need time to figure out like a clear number one contender... I don't mind it too much. It's not ideal. I'd love this guy to fight every four months. That'd be incredible. But we just kind of know that's not going to happen. So I think what's going to happen is there are going to be some discussions. They're going to talk about Volk. Ilya is going to say, no, I want to go back and celebrate. I want to have some time off. So I think they're going to end up doing Volkanovski versus Lopez for an interim belt in... Um, even though I really won't need an interim belt, I think they might just end up putting an interim belt on that fight so they can main event the Perth card. Oh, not the Perth card. The Sydney card with it and say, oh, look, see... Um, it's fucking like a belt. It's a title fight because they don't normally main event any title, any pay per views with non title fights. Even like Poirier Gaethje had the BMF belt attached to it. Like Covington Masvidal, and then I think it was Diaz Ferguson, which was just atrocious. But that those are the only two cards in recent history I can remember that didn't have a title fight main event. So I think what they're going to do is do an interim belt. Say Ilya's taking some time off. Winner of this fights him in Spain. Um. Because they're going to need some time to organize Spain. It's going to need a match up with the seasons as well. Like, if they're going to do it in an arena, you don't want it to be in fucking winter. I, like, I'm in Australia right now, so it's we're coming up on summer here. So it's going to be winter in Europe, I assume, if that's how that shit works. But then I think when it's winter here, it'll be summer in Europe. So they'll go there, I reckon, like mid next year, maybe July, June, July, May, June, July type thing. Um, and then we'll probably see the winner of Volkanovski Lopez fight Ilya Toporia for the belt. I kind of think Lopez could catch Volk, but Volk in Australia is a fucking mythical fighter, I swear. Um, look, I, I don't really want to see Volk get KO'd again, but I also want him to have the chance to get the belt back. But like, also, if Volk fights Lopez and wins, then what? He's just not going to fight Ilya because we don't want him to get KO'd. Like, you give him that chance. If he fucking gets KO'd, so be it. That's tough, but that just builds Ilya's legacy. Volk, it won't be a terrible look for him because it's pretty clear that Ilya's just that guy. Um, if Lopez wins, I actually think Lopez has a better chance to beat Ilya than Volkanovski. Not because I think Lopez is a better fighter. I think um, Volkanovski is a better technical fighter than Diego Lopez. He's got he's more well rounded in my opinion. Um, but Lopez, I think you need power, and I think you need to get after Ilya to have a chance. Like Emmett got his ass whooped in that fight. Don't get me wrong, but. I actually think you have to be the one going forward. You have to just be like, fuck it, I'm just go forward. Because we see guys have success against Ilya when they go forward. He doesn't get as many he doesn't get as many KOs on the back foot. Pretty much all of his KOs are on the front foot pressuring forward with combinations. He doesn't get the, like counter right, like step back KOs like a Conor McGregor. I think he's better than Conor by all means, but he doesn't get the, that style of KO. So I think if Lopez can just kind of bum rush him. Look, will he probably lose? Yes, but I think he's got a better chance of doing that than trying to play the fucking outside kickboxing battle with him like Volkanovski or Holloway did. Um, what I think will happen is Holloway and Volk are going to look better until they get KO'd, right, than Lopez will. But if Lopez loses, it'll be badly, but he's also got a chance to win. With his, I don't think the style that Volk's fighting is going to have a great chance to beat Ilya because you just can't fight like that for 25 minutes and not get caught. But Lopez... I think he's got a good shot. Um, I'll talk about some more stuff in another video surrounding this stuff, probably. Um, but yeah, Ilya Taporia, amazing performance, and this is what I think will happen next. I would love him to just fight in February. That'd be ideal, but I also don't want to see Volk get KO'd in Australia. That would be very sad. Uh, anyway, let's move on, though, to the loser of the main event. Max Holloway, I think it's pretty clear. Go up to lightweight, please. Yeah, I'm not even saying please. Like, he's going to do it. I think it's pretty clear. Holloway's going up to lightweight. There's nothing left from a featherweight. I would be surprised. Like, I would genuinely be 
shocked if we see Max Holloway fight another fight at 145. I don't think we see this guy weigh in at 145 ever again. Um, I think that's his last fight there. So I think he's going to go up to lightweight. There's options, right? I don't think you're going to do a Gaethje rematch. I don't think you're going to do a Poirier trilogy. I don't know. I just don't think they're going to do that. Um, I think what's going to happen is we've got Holloway... Uh, Sorry, I'm saying we've got Oliveira and Chandler fighting in a couple of weeks. And I think the winner of that is not going to deserve a title shot. And I think if the winner of that is Oliveira, bro, tell me you won't want to see Oliveira versus fucking Holloway. That shit could main event a pay-per-view easily. Um, UFC would definitely main event a pay-per-view with that for the BMF belt, uh, which I wouldn't complain about. And if Chandler wins, which would be awful, if we live in a fucking timeline where Chandler KOs Oliveira and then fights Holloway and chins him, I'm going to fucking quit the sport. Um, but that's, I think, what should happen. Now, I see some people saying Dan Hooker. Don't mind that at all. Dan Hooker for the BMF belt would be great. Um, but I think they're going to try and get Dan Hooker on that February card. I think they're going to try and book him sooner rather than later. And I think Holloway's taking time. You know what? I don't want to see Holloway back until, like, April at the minimum. Like, what's this? October now, November, December, January, February, March, April. Six months, minimum. I don't want to see this guy back within six months. I know we'll be going up, so the weight cut won't be as bad. His chin won't be as bad. I don't think his chin's bad at all. I think his chin was very good. Um, whole, Tepori just hits different, though. But yeah, I think this is what's going to happen. I don't know exactly how the mat, the lightweight division is going to fucking work itself out. They're probably going to do Gaethje Hooker. They're probably going to do Poirier versus fucking, I don't know, Dariush or some shit. Like, it's weird. Lightweight is kind of cooked. I don't know what's going on. But... Winner of Oliveira Chandler. Oliveira's kind of fallen off the activity route. Like, he used to be quite active. He's kind of become less active now, which I don't mind. Um, but yeah, a lot of these lightweight guys are only fighting like once every like six, seven months anyway. So I want to see that winner of Oliveira Chandler against Maximus Holloway, and that would be a sick fight. And I think I could see this main eventing a pay per view or being a five rounds co main event as well on like an international fight week card, maybe. Uh, so that's what I could see happening there. Uh, let's move on, though, to the co-main event. Got Chamayev. It's Strickus Duplessis next, pretty clearly, in my opinion. I think he deserves a title shot over Sean Strickland. And this guy has really changed the narrative around himself of like a kind of inactive, will he ever really achieve that? Like, I think a lot of people after the Usman fight were like, is he actually that guy? Like, is he actually the fucking dude that people are saying we're going to be a double champ or some shit? I think it's pretty fucking clear that if this dude could have made welterweight healthy, he's winning a belt at welterweight. I don't think he's going to fight there because that would be dumb for him to try and cut down because he's clearly even struggling almost at middleweight. But fight the, at middleweight. Do not try and ever fucking go down to welterweight again. That would be retarded. Um, on it, like Remember how those discussions back around 300 when they were just scrambling for a main event? They offered Hamza Chamayev fight Leon Edwards. That shit would have gone badly for Leon Edwards. Um, I'll just say that if Hamza did. Hamza probably would have weighed in at 175 and just choked him out inside two minutes. But Hamza deserves it over Sean Strickland. Now, if I don't care if you're a Sean Strickland fan. I, I used to kind of like him a bit. Uh, he's just annoying now. Like, you can tell Sean Strickland, like, he, you can tell his emotions on Twitter by how he tweets. Like, he's just kind of sitting there in his room being like, me, 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 you don't get a title shot. You're not living in Alan Chechnya. Go back to crypto scams. Like, bro, come on. Like, funny, funny joke, haha. But, like, you went to a boring ass decision with Costa, but, like, both of you are coming off wins, right? Hamzat's coming off a round one dominant submission over Robert Whitaker. You're coming off a dead split decision. Like, sure, you won comfortably, but, like, boring. Um, now, what I don't know, what, this is what I'm thinking, because, like, last, like, a month ago, People are asking me, like, Dana, when are we seeing Strickland Duple C? It's like, we're, 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 we're going to announce that soon. What, what's the question? Strickland Duple C? Yeah, that, that's that's coming soon. We're, we're announcing that one in, in the couple next weeks. Um, but now they asked him, and they're like, I, I don't know. You, you know, ask me on Tuesday. We'll, we'll see We'll see what happens on Tuesday. Like, he's talking about matchmaking meetings. Like, that's clear that he's now reconsidered. Now, what I think might end up happening is, even though this fight is unbelievably pay-per-view worthy, Turkey L fucking Sheik, whatever his name is, big, big oil man, um, he uh, is going to just fork out a bunch of money because there's a Saudi card happening in February. And I think he's going to fork out a whole bunch of money for either Islam versus Armin or Duplessis versus Hamza because I think he's going to want a massive fight for Saudi because the first time around they were meant to get Hamza Whitaker, they ended up getting Ikram uh, versus Whitaker. But this time, I think he might be like, fuck it. We're just tw- take, you're not going to get pay per views on this. It's a fight night. Take fucking $25 million and just let it happen. And we, we're going to do a, we're going to do it on a fight night. I don't think Dana would love it, but I think he would just, 
It's m- money talks, and if you fucking give him money, Dana White will do anything. So, I think that's what happens. I think they're gonna Strickland's gonna get passed up, and he's gonna go on a series of angry rants on Twitter and crash out, and probably get forced to fight again against fucking Amavov or some shit. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty clear that Hamza Chamaev deserves the next title shot. And even if you don't think he deserves it merit wise, because oh maybe he's only got one ranked win at well uh, middleweight or something. Yeah, but that one ranked win is Whitaker, which is still better than any of Strickland's recent wins, like, um, since losing to Drickers, which is only one, which is Costa. So, yeah, I don't know. Whitaker beat Costa. Um, Whitaker also beat Costa in a more impressive fashion than Strickland did it. And then Hamza just smoked Whitaker. So, yeah, he deserves the title shot next, in my opinion. Uh, let's talk about Whitaker, though. What's next for Bobby Knuckles? I think Israel Adesanya is going to fight next on the February card in Perth. And I think he's going to either fight Amavov or Baralio. Now, whoever he doesn't fight there is who I've selected next for Whitaker. Now, maybe they want to fight again sooner. But Whitaker didn't get brutally knocked out. And he posted recently. It doesn't seem like it was that bad. I think I saw someone originally saying, oh, he might have to have his like, jaw wide, like, shut for a bit or something to, like, recover. Apparently, it's not too bad. I think it's just fucked up his teeth. So, he'll take some time. He won't be back for a while. But the winner of... No, sorry. Izzy's going to fight Amavov or Baralio. I don't know who he's going to fight. Baralio has been saying it's like they're in talks. But then Izzy's watching Amavov footage and stuff. So, I don't know what's going on. But whoever Izzy fights, the person he doesn't fight between those two, I think, should fight Whitaker. Maybe you just give him a step back and he can fight fucking... Jack Hermanson or some shit like that to get him an easy win. But I think that's what's probably going to end up happening is Whitaker versus either Amavov or Baralio. Probably is like a fight night main event in like an arena somewhere, something like that. Imagine we get a fucking Whitaker Apex main event. Maybe like a three round feature fight on a pay per view, probably. But yeah, I think we see Whitaker back in like March or April, maybe. Could take some time over Christmas, let himself heal up, kind of get back into the zone, and then probably fight either Amavov or Baralio. Probably Baralio. I think it might end up being easy versus Amavov. Um, Baralio is a little bit less active than Amavov. Amavov fought three times this year. I think underrated fighter of the year contender. Not he's obviously not fighter of the year, but underrated like non-title fight fighter of the year in my opinion is Kyra Baralio. Oh, uh, is Nasser in Amavov? Baralio did well too. Got two fights, but uh, apart from that, like he fought Paul Craig in I think May. Before that, when was his like last fight? Before? Like he's pretty inactive from what I remember. But he did fight Canadian in August. But yeah, I don't know. Is he gonna fight one of these two? Whitaker can fight the other one. I don't mind. I wouldn't mind Whitaker versus Fluffy. That'd be kind of cool. But I also kind of don't want Whitaker to lose again. So, and I think Whitaker, Fluffy might just beat him. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. We'll see what happens next for Whitaker. But I feel bad for him anyway. Let's move on though to the next fight. Big Unk, Big Unkalaev got the win against Rakic. Uh, spoiled my underdog prediction. It was looking all right in the first round. But Rakic was backing up too much. He wasn't fucking throwing at all. Um, in the second and third, he was just being a bit too timid um, and kind of defaulted. But I thought he was going to come out and looking like he did against fucking Yuri. And I was like, oh, it's going to be all right. But no. Nah. Anyway, fair enough. I, I wasn't overly confident in the pick. But Ankalaev, it's title shot next. Um, look, I could fuck around and be like, oh, I reckon he's, uh, he's done enough to earn a Blahovic rematch. Um, but no, it's Ankalaev for the belt next. It's a clear number one contender. It's an interesting fight. It's actually a fight that we can get hyped for, not like, like, Yuri on short notice was kind of hype. Jamal Hill was kind of hype. Khalil was like, eh, it's going to be fun, but it's not really deserving. This is like, we build this up, clearly the best two light heavyweights in the world, and yeah, that would be a very interesting matchup to see. Um, I'm not going to talk about it for too long, because obviously, it's pretty obvious what's next. Anyway, let's move on to the loser of that fight, which is Alexander Rakic. Rakic, I think, should fight the winner of Azamat Merzakhanov against Nikita Krylov. He has not faced either of these two. I was originally going to say the winner of Olberg and uh, Ozdemir, but obviously he's fought Ozdemir, so that wouldn't work out as well. But yeah, I think the winner, or the winner of Gushkov and uh, Johnny Walker, that would be a solid fight too. I want, no, but you know what? I want to see the winner of that fight, Yuri. Um, now, I don't think Johnny Walker's going to win, but if he does, it would be, that would be retarded. <laughs> Johnny Walker versus Yuri would be the most cooked fight ever. Bogdan Gushkov versus Yuri is also incredibly cooked. So that's what I want to see, the winner of that versus Yuri. Because um, I th- still think he needs to take a bit of time off, but he's going to fight Jamal Hill. Sorry, yeah, I forgot. He's literally basically confirmed to fight Jamal Hill. So Yuri versus Jamal Hill, and then if he loses that, then you can give him the winner of Gushkov and Walker. But for Rakic, winner of Krylov, Merzikhanov, you know, we're just sticking with the fucking Eastern European World War II type shit, you know, um, Soviet bloc type matchup here. Uh, Merzikhanov and Krylov, going to be an interesting fight. I think Merzikhanov might win. Um, 
I just don't know how I'm going to rate Krylov coming back. Like, I think he might just look a bit washed. Or not not washed, but, like, I don't know how good he's going to look coming back. You know, he's probably taken some injuries in the war. You know, we all thought he died in war, but apparently he's alive. So, um, but Mirzakhanov versus Krylov, winner versus Rakic, probably like a fucking apex main event, to be honest, type matchup there. Uh, anyway, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Laron Murphy, bro, fuck, stick to the calf kick, Laron, you know, <laughs> pump the jab, Laron. Uh, fucking budget, featherweight Leon Edwards here. I'm gonna do a video comparing fighters in the UFC to maybe, like, other fighters right now or fighters from the past. And, bro, Laron Murphy is just featherweight Leon Edwards. Like, I swear to God, they they fight the same. Um, but Laron's just a bit more entertaining. But yeah, he got a good win against Danny. Ige. Close fight, arguably could have lost. Kind of got beaten up a bit in the first, but came back in the second and third. Um, Josh Emmett's who he called out. I- I'm okay with that, given Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett's been out for a fucking year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when he gets booked again. But he's coming up on 40. I think he already is 40. You're 40 years of age. Did I say a fucking... What are you doing with a school bag on stage? You can't even read. Um, but... Yeah, Lerone Murphy versus Josh Emmett. I want to see if he gets fucking cracked like uh, Ige cracked. I think Ige is actually a more clean puncher, but Emmett obviously hits harder. But if Emmett uh, cracks him like Dan Ige cracks him, I, I think Lerone Murphy is sleeping on the fucking canvas. But headshot dead. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be a good fight. Fight night main event, I reckon, in the Apex will be cool. I mean, it'll be kind of crazy to have it in the Apex, but that's probably what they'll do. I don't think they'll main event Lerone Murphy in an arena. Could just be a three-rounder on a pay-per-view, but it seems like a very kind of Apexy throw throwaway, like, oh, we need a kind of main event. Let's do Emmett versus Lerone Murphy. I don't think anyone would complain about that either. Anyway, let's move on, though, to the next fighter. Dan Ige, I think he... This is the cycle of Dan Ige. He fights that up-and-comer... He loses to an up-and-comer, then he wins another fight or whatever, and then he loses, and then he fights like another guy outside the rankings. I think that guy's William Gomez. Now, I actually changed my mind because I put this here, but then, and I couldn't be fucked going back and changing it. Steve Garcia is my actual selection. Uh, Steve Garcia or William Gomez, it kind of depends. I wouldn't mind it. I think he beats both. But William Gomez won a fucking robbery decision in his last fight against uh, Joannis and Britu. I would have loved Britu because Britu was religiously calling out Dan Ige. Dan Ige, what the fuck? Like, he would just keep calling him out after every fight, and I wanted to see that fight, because it would have been fun. Uh, but William Gomez got a robbery decision, so I think you can do Gomez versus Ige. I think Ige would whoop his ass, to be honest. Um, or, if you want to go the Latin, like, when Ige fought Nate Landway, if you want to go that route, do Ige versus fucking Steve Garcia. That should be sick. So yeah, either of those matchups is good. Uh, anyway, let's move on, though, to the main card opener. Next up, Sharon Magomedov. I want to see him fight Michelle Pereira. Uh, these are two explosive guys who kick a lot and throw a lot of hard punches and shit and try and kill people. Um, and Michelle Pereira has no gas tank. And also, these two have beef because Michelle Pereira walked out to his fight with Andre Petrosky with an Israeli flag. And um, <laughs> Shara took issue to that, as you can imagine, obviously being the uh, religion that he is. Um, so these two have some beef. They've talked back and forth when Michelle Pereira's fight fell out against, uh, oh, sorry, no, when Michelle Pereira smoked Ehor, uh, even though Shara was booked to fight Ehor at that time, because Ehor stepped in on short notice, and then Shara tweeted him saying, step in, don't be a coward or something, don't be a coward like the Israelis that you're defending or some shit, I, I think he said that, don't quote me on that, but, uh, I think that's, that's around what he said, um, so yeah, very interesting stuff, and we could definitely, uh, uh let's, let's do this on the, uh, Saudi card, and, uh, we'll see what happens if, uh, Michelle Pereira walks out with an Israeli flag in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That'd be very interesting. Um, but yeah, that's a good fight. It would just be fun as fuck as well. Michelle Plater is currently ranked. I still think I think he's like number 15. So yeah, fucking make it happen. As Dana White wa- as Dana White says, that's the fact that people want to see. But no, this actually would be sick. Like, Shara actually does, all jokes aside, I think he has kind of looked mid in a lot of his fights. But this was a sick KO. He looked solid here. Um, not like he was dominating the whole fight, but he got a crazy KO. So fair play. I think ranked opponents justifiable. Lower end ranked opponent, not like a f- he called out Israel. So shut up, um, botched. But yeah, him versus Michelle Pereira would be fun as fuck. Anyway, let's move on though to the next fight. Ibo Islan versus Ryan Span is the fight I want to see next for Ibo Islan. Uh, not quite a ranked opponent next. I know some some people were saying like the loser of Smith and Reyes. I don't want to see him fight Reyes. I think he would still lose. I think he's mid. Like I don't think him beating Sequeira means he's good. Um, because he also did still look mid against Anton Trigali, but yeah, Ryan Span's retarded, he would probably stand with him and look dumb and get caught, so yeah, this would be a fun fight on a pay-per-view card, he took no damage, so get it, and Ryan Span took no damage as well, both coming off very quick wins, Ryan Span at 307, Ebo Islan at 308, uh, or Aslan, whatever, at, I keep calling him Ebo Islan, I think it's Ebo Aslan, but whatever, 308, 
uh, so yeah, basically fought within the month of each other, both coming off wins inside two minutes. Get, make him fight. That'd be fun. Um, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Jeff Neal got a win. He was whooping RDA, and then he, RDA got injured. So it wasn't like an out-of-nowhere fluke injury. Like, he was just winning. But I think what's going to happen next is him versus Carlos Prates. Now, I saw some people saying, like, a Gilbert Burns fight, or, oh, yeah, back to the top 10 for, for Jeff Neal. He's coming off two losses. Yeah, now, yes, it's to Shavkat and Ian Gary, who are both undefeated. Good fighters. Um, but, bro, fight Prates, man. That shit will be sick. I think that's what the UFC will do as well, because I think he's going to smoke Magny in a couple weeks, um, two weeks from now. I think he's going to absolutely run through Neil Magny. And then, yeah, this fight will be sick. Prates versus fucking Jeff Neal. That'll be your first like, real test, like, test test like he fought Lee Jun Liang who's all right and he's about to find Magni who's a crafty vet but like Jeff Neal's the guy who's actually got power who's actually still not washed and who's not 40 years of age so I think this would be a great matchup as like another maybe apex main event or put him on a pay-per-view card I think that'd be sick I think Prata's in the apex is fucking criminal but if he gets a main event spotlight, it is what it is. But yeah, I think that's what I want to see next. Anyway, let's move on, though, to another fighter. Next up, we got Mataj Rebecki versus Ludovic Klein is what I want to see. Just two fucking midgets for the lightweight division. Two real manlet type, short, stocky dudes that are just going to swing big, meaty hooks. Um, and one of them is going to fall over. Now, I think this fight would be sick, right? Because Ludovic Klein's coming off a kind of mid-performance against Roosevelt Roberts. Both of these guys fought Roosevelt Roberts. Rebecca beat him inside two minutes or something. Like, he just subbed him. And Klein took him to a kind of boring decision. But Klein also did smoke Moises. This will be a very interesting fight. I would probably go Rebecca, but I'm not sure. Like, Klein, if he, Klein also beat Bahamondas. Like, what the fuck? This makes no sense. How does Klein look mid against Roosevelt Roberts, but beats Bahamondas? Like whoops him as well so weird um how some of these like kind of mma math kind of thing works but this fight be sick ludovic klein uh mateusz rebecki if they go europe do this fight in europe obviously polish dude versus slovak um could do this fight in europe in france if they go there not in september obviously i don't want to wait a year for this um but yeah i think both of these guys obviously rebecki took a lot of damage he's gonna need some time off um so yeah i want to see this fight maybe sometime april may type shit um, if they go Europe for a fight night, if they go to like the UK in March, which they usually do, they go UK in like March and July a lot of the time. If we see a UK card in March, I wouldn't mind seeing it in the UK. That'd be all right. Um, it'd be a relatively quick turnout, but not too quick. That'd be five months for a recce. That'd be fine. So yeah, make this fight happen. I will talk about Oral by though, because he is sick. Um, my Tebek Oral by versus Tiago Moises is I think the fight I selected. I want to see next. That'd be sick. Oral by, I think he's still very solid. I don't think he's going to be like a top 10 guy, but I think he needs, he's got, he needs some experience. He needs to work a bit more. He's somehow only 26 or 27, which no one believes. He's at least a thousand years old. Um, <laughs> my mate came over and he'd never seen Oral by before. Cause he, so I had my mates over who were proper fans and then some other guys came over just to watch. And he's like, what the fuck? This guy looks so Mongolian. <laughs> it's like, yeah, fair enough. You're not wrong. Um, so yeah, Michael Berg Oral by very experienced fighter. Um, you know, thousands of years of experience, but I do think he needs some more UFC experience to kind of reach his potential. Um, Tiago Moises is a guy that just kind of fights these prospecty type fights uh, against the Oral Buys of the world or the Ludovic Kleins of the world or these kind of guys that he loses, or the Joel Alvarez's as well. So yeah, I want to see Oral Buy versus Tiago Moises. Anyway, let's move on though to the next fighter. Next up, we got Abbas Magomedov versus Armin Petrosian. I, I'm putting this now for Abbas because I didn't want to do it for, I want to put it for the winner, but yeah, this is a good fight, these guys are both pretty close to each other in the rankings, both kickboxers, both long rangey strikers, again, could probably do this on like a Europe card if they went there, um, if they go Spain, not too far, not like, not way further in the year, obviously Armand did take a bit of damage with that KO, so he's going to probably want a bit of time off, if they go Spain in like June, I, I, I don't mind waiting till June for this, Abbas is not like a crazy active fighter anyway, so yeah, do this fight, I mean, it's kind of lazy matchmaking. They're both on the same card. But yeah, they're both pretty close to each other in the ranking. One guy coming off a win, one guy coming off a loss. That's around the type of fight that usually gets made. Uh, let's move on, though, to another fighter. Just rebook in Zedriku versus Tafa. That works for me. Uh, next up, Basharat against uh, Ricky Simone. I think that's a good test. I think ranked opponent is justifiable, but I think you can go one step just outside the rankings. Ricky Simone has now become that like one step just outside the rankings kind of test. So I think that'd be a good fight. 
Uh, who else we got here? Nerdiev versus Edmund Shabazi, and I think that's a good matchup to make. And then last up, we got Carlos Leal versus Basil Hafez. I'm matching up Carlos Leal because he won that fight, and also I'm matching up with another fellow juice head. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it, guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, follow my Instagram, Left Lane MMA. Subscribe to the second channel as well. Leave some other videos you guys want to see in the comments, and goodbye.